Episode 34 with Easton Allred. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. Aloha, men of abundance. It is Aloha Friday, and it is also Pay It Forward Friday. Today, we are talking with a young man that is definitely fueled for life. In fact, that's his website, but we're going to talk more about that in just a minute because I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to afford you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today by helping out the Special Olympics. I have a friend of mine, Tina Ray, who also happens to be an amazing nurse. And Tina is always involved in some sort of fundraising or something for the community. Tina also happens to be one of those ladies that is into extreme sports. Well, she's combining her charity work with extreme sports by repelling 40 stories down the side of the Hyatt Regency Waikiki Beach Resorts and Spa in the 8th annual Over the Edge fundraising event. Tina is one of less than 100 people who are going to do this and experience what it feels like to be on the rooftop of the Hyatt Regency, look 400 feet down, and then go over the edge. And she's doing this for Special Olympics. So here's how you can be abundant in your life today. You can make a donation of any amount that you can afford to her fundraiser page. You will be able to find the link to Tina's fundraiser page at the show notes of this episode. That's at menofabundance.com forward slash 034. So right after this show, or even if you pause the show now, go to menofabundance.com forward slash 034. Scroll down to the bottom and you will see a link that I will title Tina Over the Edge. Abundant leaders, it's always a great feeling when we can help others out. And Special Olympics is definitely a great organization to support. And I want to see Tina go over the edge. So help us support by going to menofabundance.com forward slash 034. Scroll to the bottom, click on Tina over the edge, and make whatever donation you can. All right, let me introduce you to our featured guest. Easton Allred is a 15-year-old college student and entrepreneur. He is fascinated by nutrition, personal development, and optimal performance within sports and life in general. Easton has been blessed with the opportunity to meet some incredible people, travel all around the world, and we talk about that in the show, and gain new perspectives. He is currently attending a local community college, running his heart out, and playing basketball. Easton is always trying to figure out new ways to perform the best he possibly can in life. He has learned over time that so much of life is a mental game that through setting goals and taking action can be lived to the fullest. Easton, welcome to Men of Abundance. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff, man. Where are you at in the world? I live in Colorado and I have been passionate about health, entrepreneurship, athletics, and and um, all things personal development for about ten years now. Yeah. So before we get started with the with uh, you know your backstory and everything, and and we introduce yourself, and we're going to get really personal here in just a minute, and find out who Easton is and what you've been up to and and where you're headed. I like to start the show out the same way I start every every morning, which is with an attitude of gratitude. So share with us what you have to be grateful for today. Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm really, really grateful to have the people in my life that I do. I'm grateful for the family and the friends that I have because you really are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I'm really grateful to have peers and a family that inspires me to be better. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely a lot to be grateful for. And you're absolutely correct in that you are the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with. So... Uh, I talked a little bit about you, you know, gave a really brief bio uh, before we got started. And but what I'd like for you to do is share who you are, what you're doing, and let's get a little bit personal. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, I'm Easton Allred, and I am an athlete, entrepreneur, and I'm very, very passionate about health. So, the last time I had a piece of cake for my birthday was when I was 10 years old. I'm very passionate about how I'm feeling my body, and I really want to feel my body so that I can have optimal performance in whatever I do and so I can feel good. So I'm very passionate about that. I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own podcast called Fueled for Teens, which is a podcast helping teenagers to develop habits that will fuel them to greatness. And I teach them all things personal development, goal setting. Super, super fun. I really enjoy doing that. And then I am 15 years old. I am in college, and I did that through doing homeschool for a little bit, getting ahead in my education, and then now attending my uh, local community college. So yeah, that's that's about, that's a little bit about me. So were you did you did homeschooled in addition to traditional schooling, or was you just strictly homeschooled? Uh, no. So in about our in sixth grade, I switched from public schooling to online schooling. And I did that originally for basketball and for athletics. And then through that, I decided I wanted to start my own business and then homeschooling became an even better idea. Yeah, I've always been very intrigued with homeschooling and homeschooling has definitely come a long way from, I don't know about 10 years ago, but definitely 20 years ago. The stigma is much different. There's a lot more support. I know there's some, you know, regulations behind what has to be taught and how and whatnot but with the advent of the internet and now out here in Hawaii anyway I know they have basically uh, homeschool groups and some kids some that I know anyway they go to they go to a traditional school one or two times a week and not only not really all day and some of them do that specifically so they can be involved in the sports but also for other activities that get involved but then they have groups of homeschool uh, students who basically go on field trips, if you will, and go explore and learn other things. What's your experience with that? Um, So I never never had the opportunity to do a school group. I did all online, and I just did that by myself. My family took that opportunity to go to Thailand, to Beijing, and travel a whole lot. So that's kind of what I did for my field trips. That is amazing. I love that. And how do you feel about your education as far as, and I don't want to focus specifically on this, but I am very intrigued with this. How do you feel about your education compared to your peers? You know, I feel like what I'm doing in college right now and before doing homeschooling is I feel like my education is much more efficient. I feel that I have the opportunity to get way ahead in school and anyone could really be doing it. So that's that's kind of how I feel about it. Is that the answer you were looking for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The answer is whatever whatever you feel. But um, why do you think that is? Why do you feel that you're, you're ahead in your education? And that doesn't make you ahead of anybody in, as an individual, as a person, but just as far as where you feel you would be otherwise. Yeah, so I feel like um, homeschooling has given me the opportunity to get ahead because with school you're going and the teacher has to spend a certain amount of time on a lesson and you have to be at the school for a certain amount of time and you go to recess and I feel like a lot of school is a little bit slow and I felt that through homeschooling I was able to progress my own speed and I, you know, I really, really enjoyed it, honestly, because it allowed me to expand myself and learn things that I was really passionate about rather than the standard education. Yeah, that's a very good point. In fact, um, I just recently listened to a TED Talk. I listen, Do you listen to TED Talks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love these TED Talks. And I just listened to a TED Talk. The title of that TED Talk that I listened to is called Let's Teach for Mastery, Not Test Scores. And that's another, it's another podcast. It's called TED Talks Audio. And that one had a great scenario in that talking about mathematics, for instance, and how they're teaching it backwards. They're basically teaching a portion of, because it's all a puzzle that builds upon itself. And so they're, they're teaching a portion of it, and they're not teaching it to time. They're teaching, well, let me re- see, see if I can get this right. They're not really teaching it until the student learns it 
they're teaching it based on modules and when that next module is done two or three weeks whatever it is they move on to the next module and more than half of the students aren't there yet to ready to move forward so you look at it kind of like building a, a house you build the foundation and if you build the foundation to about 70 percent and then the foreman comes in and says yeah this all looks good you know but over here the cement's kind of soft and this rebar sticking out a little bit over here but you know it's about 80 percent so we'll call it a C so go ahead and start building the framework and and building the house and then you're gonna have a mediocre framework you're gonna have a D you can't build onto that form on that foundation because there's no foundation to build on whereas I see what you're saying is you were able to basically go at your pace as opposed to wait on either being slowed down or trying to be sped up by the class or the instructor. Does that make sense? For sure, yeah, and that's that's definitely true. That school, public schooling is good in many ways, but that is one thing that was really hard for me is that you don't get to go at your pace. And, you know, some things I need more help with and some things that I don't even need to learn. I'm just relearning it in class. So that was the nice thing about homeschooling is I could just learn whatever I was intrigued by and whatever I needed to learn. And I could really build that foundation. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So at this point, Easton, I, I really kind of want to get you know an idea of where you're going, how you got into uh, your entrepreneurial journey and your podcast. So what I'd like for you to share with us at this point is kind of a kick in the gut moment that made you create that pivot point for yourself to go that route. Yeah, so when starting up my podcast... I was super nervous and afraid to launch it and to share it with my peers. And the reason being for that is as a high schooler and around all of these people who are doing very different things than that, they're not necessarily launching podcasts about personal development. And I was afraid that I was going to be bullied about it and that people weren't going to like it. And I think the reason why that is is because the world doesn't want you to excel. The world treats you and teaches you how to be average and it's a little bit scary to think outside of the box and to do something different or to do something different but I eventually built up the confidence after procrastinating for a little while and got over that so that was probably my worst entrepreneurial moment what helped you do that what helped me to get over it yeah what helped you build up your confidence and uh and get over that so my mom is a very big mentor and influence for me. She originally taught me how to do goals when I was 10 years old, and she's been helping me to start out my podcast and been inspiring me for a very long time. And I kind of told my mom, I, I told her I was my concerns and how my podcast was going to fit in with high schoolers and how on the high school basketball team I was going to get bullied. And you know what? She just kind of sat me down and she was like, we kind of laughed over it for a minute. And then she was like, Easton. If you're going to do great things, you got to be different and you got to do scary things. And through stepping outside of your comfort zone, that's the zone where you can learn and progress. So that's what inspired me to start the podcast and get it launched and despite what other people may think. You have a great mom. I do. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's 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 amazing that she would, you know, push you to go out there like that. You know, you had different fears about going into podcasting, being bullied and and whatnot, but you definitely overcame that and it was all because of your mom. I'm I'm sure of that. What else helped you build up your confidence in in podcasting and deciding to go out and be an entrepreneur? So, I've always known that I wanted to be an entrepreneur from the time I was pretty young. I've been passionate about it for a very long time, and I went to, do you know who Nick Unsworth is? I know the name. I don't know who Okay, who he is. so Nick Unsworth does a lot with Facebook marketing and personal development and entrepreneurism, and I went to one of his events and met a lot of cool people and decided, like, hey, this is really what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur, and I want to start my podcast, and then from there, I just kind of launched it. I started researching and doing everything I can to learn more about it and to get on iTunes, and I knew that I had the knowledge to do so. For so long, I've been reading self-help books, attending events, listening to podcasts, and I felt really knowledgeable on the topic. And I felt like I could help a lot of teenagers who maybe are not so knowledgeable. So that's kind of what gave me the podcast, or what gave me the, the, the inspiration to start the podcast and gave me the motivation to push past my fears. 
And how old were you when you went to Nick's conference? Uh, 14, about one year ago. That's amazing. And I know those things aren't, aren't cheap. And, you know, did you have to travel to get there as well? Uh, yes, I did. It's in L.A. and I'm from Colorado. But it was a really cool experience and for sure worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you get an opportunity to improve yourself, regardless of it's in a traditional sense through college or in an, in an opportunity to go sit down with people that are doing what you want to do and people that you want to emulate, obviously, you know, that's just the best way to... Uh, best investment in yourself for sure. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I would agree with that. At your age, in doing what you're doing, you realize that there are adults that I personally know who have been studying, learning, doing personal development for 10, 20 years and have never pulled the trigger and haven't done a thing, but they have a wealth of knowledge and just simply have not taken action on that knowledge to really benefit anybody in such a way that you're doing uh and i just i i gotta tell you right up front i commend you for that because you've done already more than most people ever will well thank you i appreciate that so why are you doing what you're doing what is this what is your podcast about and what are you doing for teens so i feel that a lot of podcasts are more directed towards adults and that's great but i think that there is a lack of podcast um um, material for teenagers specifically and teenagers need that in their high school times they don't have those success principles being taught to them and they really don't know how to set goals correctly and so that's like what I want to do because the high school is a prime time to learn all these things and to get started early with being an entrepreneur and being successful in athletics the trick is to learn early and to read books and listen to podcasts and through my podcast, I want to be that person. I want to be teenagers' outlet and resource to learn and be uh, become better themselves and progress. That's a very good point. And I like the fact, and I don't know if this was forward thinking on your part or not, but at some point you're no longer going to be a teenager. And, <laughs> and you named your uh, podcast Fueled, and that's basically what your, what your business name is. The cool thing about that is, in my mindset, and based on what I know, is that's something that you can pass on to somebody else because it's not necessarily your name brand on that particular uh, name. Is it, How'd you come up with the name Fueled? Um, that's interesting. I haven't thought about that in a while. You know, I have I was brainstorming for a really, really long time, and I think that name just came to me for some reason. But I think that Fueled represents motivation and that is exactly what my podcast is, aspires to be and what I really hope it is now is motivation and to me that's what fuel describes it's motivation yeah and it, it kind of more reaches out to your uh, generation as well at this point mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I agree more, more so than motivation and you know it's such an overused term and there's you know so many out there for that I've seen books on teens and I've seen other people that gear their courses and whatnot towards adults but also talk about teens like Robbie Kiyosaki has some stuff for teens and all the others as well but the podcast I've come across really hasn't done exactly what you're doing with your podcast did you do any research on that and make any decisions based off of that you know so I did I actually did a lot of research on that I tried to find books and podcasts for teens and I found found a, a couple books that were really great and I really didn't find, I found one podcast that I just did not relate to as a teenager. And so I figured, wow, this is completely open for me. I can take this over and I can be that one person. And that's a market that's completely unopened. And I can really help these people. So that is why I decided to go to teens. And the research of doing that helped me out. And let's see what, sorry, I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, here it is. So I found a guy named Caleb Maddox who actually has a YouTube channel. He's 14 years old, 14 years old and directs his podcast to teenagers and it is phenomenal. I discovered that only about a month ago and he is also personal development for teenagers, but it's phenomenal. I'd recommend checking him out as well. Definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at that as well. Um, and I'll have that information in the show notes as well. Um, so... 
at this point, how far are you into your podcast? I think I'm about three months in right now, and I'm just trying to get off the ground, sending emails all the time, and trying to make as many relationships as I can, make as many friendships, and trying to market and get my podcast out there. Cool, yeah. Yeah, you know, podcasting is one of those things that you have to absolutely love it, especially at first, because at first you're talking to a whole lot of nobody (laughs) (laughs) until people find you and start sharing and, and, uh, you know, really kind of getting into the content and becoming a fan of it. Uh, So it's definitely a labor of love. Do you have any good news stories so far from any of your audience? Um, I do not. I mean, a lot of people, or I guess not too many yet, so hopefully have many of those in the future. I've had a few people told me that I've inspired them quite a bit and have inspired them to go after their dreams. Uh, As I am only 15, they know that if I can do it, they can do it. So I've had that, but not a whole lot in that realm yet. (laughs) Look for more soon. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you're just getting started and to uh you inspired me i'll tell you that right now when i first saw your your information and you reached out to me you know to talk to me about podcasting and and getting on the show and stuff and i immediately looked you up because i was like wow i was impressed with you reaching out to me first off and the way you did so and then i went and looked at your site and looked at some more information and i was very inspired to say the least that man of your age is already stepping out and one living your life the way that you are and two being able to uh, reach out to others through a podcast because let's face it uh, podcasting isn't one of the easiest things to do I mean you could go set up a blog and that's fairly easy Uh, but with all the technical aspects of recording editing all of the other software that's required and hardware to set up a podcast is is not a simple thing to do yeah, that that is for sure. I mean, I love the process and I love the journey because, I, I mean, I would agree with you and I know that you know that process process and setting up this podcast is it's hours and hours and hours of work and I hope that I can find somebody else who wants to start a podcast and mentor them because looking back, I think now that I know all the tricks and uh, all the tricks to getting started, I could start a podcast in like two hours, but getting there and learning all those things to just took forever so i love the journey and i appreciate that yeah it helps that when we have mentors out there who did you who did initially uh did you reach out for assistance from somebody to uh, launch your podcast uh yeah john lee dumas so i i am in podcasters paradise and i used his program to help me get started with mine yeah very awesome program uh john has definitely helped me out john and kate and the whole podcasters paradise team has helped me tremendously and i you know as well as um podcast websites i use podcast websites for my website and uh in fact they just gave me a whole big old beautiful facelift uh some of the guys over there so i'm loving the my experience with that and honestly i couldn't have done it without all of the assistance within the podcast paradise community Oh, absolutely. I I tried to YouTube it the whole way and uh, didn't go so well. So I figured Mm. the podcast is paradise was more time efficient. It is. You know, I I say I couldn't do it, but I could have done it. I just wouldn't have been able to do it as efficiently. And in all of the, you know, different aspects to it was I would some of the stuff I would have never even considered. Because like you said, YouTube's great, but that's that kind of it only takes you so far. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So we are going to pay it forward here. And what I'd like for you to do is to give Men of Abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Perfect. I, you know, I've been really excited. I saw this on the interview flow and I'm very excited to answer this question because I feel very passionately about it. But number one thing I would say to do is the miracle morning, which is a series of things that you do every morning to prepare yourself for the day and to get centered on your goals and in your life. And the inspiration I had from that was from Hal Elrod. So I highly recommend you checking that out, The Miracle Morning. And just briefly, I'll give you a summary of what it's all about. You wake up, you do some meditation, you journal, you write down your goals, you visualize your goals, and you say your goals to yourself through affirmations. And it is life-changing. So I'd recommend doing that. Secondly, I would recommend changing your self-talk. I think the way that you talk to yourself is so important. Your mindsets that you have throughout your day are huge. 
you're talking to yourself all day and what you're saying to yourself is so important. You need to be telling yourself good things and things that will help you to get where you want to go. And then the last thing is find ways to always be productive in what you're doing. If you have some downtime, send out some emails on your phone where you're waiting for a bus ride, uh, reach out to people, make new relationships. And um, yeah, those are the three I have. Yeah, those are definitely amazing action steps. And uh, what daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? So I would say the biggest or the best habit that I have is my self-talk. All day I'm telling myself to do better at something and to win the day in a sense, to get all I can out of the day and to develop myself as a person. And I would say that's my best habit. Excellent. What book would you recommend to Abundant Leaders and why? How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That is my favorite book. I've read it two or three times now. And the book is all about how to deal with people and how to make new friends and develop new relationships and succeed in the business world. I would 100% recommend that book. It's a must read. It is absolutely excellent book. I will have that book listed in the show notes at menofabundance.com forward slash 034. My show notes are complete with timestamps so that you can go directly to a specific point in the podcast uh, from menofabundance.com. So I have one more question for you, and that is, what does living a life of abundance mean to you? Great question, and I think living a life of abundance is to find happiness in your life and to find people to surround yourself with that inspire you and that you love and to have a goal and to have something to work towards it betters yourself and betters others through service and that's what living a life of abundance means to me and you know Wally can I say one more thing real quick absolutely another book I would really recommend is The Happiness Advantage and that's Sean Acor I'd recommend that one because it really teaches the science of happiness. And happiness, to me, is one of the biggest goals, if not the ultimate goal. Why do you say that? I think that you're, well, aside from religious reasons, I think that happiness on, I think that happiness is probably the most important thing. You want to be happy, and through your happiness, you can have a light that others can see, and you can live a great life and so that's why I would say that yeah you know I'm really glad that you said that because that is really one of the many premises of living a life of abundance is so many people are chasing this dream of and usually you'll hear it I want to earn a you know I want a million dollars and my question is well why and they will give the reason why and usually that's not the true reason why and I'll say I'll dig a little bit deeper and then ultimately it all comes down to being happy and then I point out, look, you can be happy today. And the fact of the matter is, unless you're happy today, that million dollars will never will never come. Because success doesn't come before happiness. Happiness comes before success. And to me, success is happiness. So why not be happy today? And you'll attract so much more into your life. And so many more people will be will love to be around you. And as I always say, your network is your net worth. So be happy today. And you'll reach your levels of success and greatness. Yeah, you know, I think, I think you're 100% right on that. People get confused on their goals. They want to do certain things. Like you said, they want to make a million dollars. But why? You want to do that, they would say, to be happy. But that's not necessarily what leads you to be happy. So I think keeping that perspective that you want to be happier and making the choices and choosing to be grateful to be happier is essential. Absolutely. Excellent. So we're going to close this up. And before we do, I'd love for you to leave us with a parting piece of guidance and any way that we can reach you and consume your podcast. Um, so I'll give you a way to reach me first. Um, you can find me on www.fuel.life. That's my website. You can find all my podcast episodes and um, some more about me and ways to contact me through there. And then I'm on iTunes at Fueled for Teens. 
Instagram is fueled for teens, and then Facebook and Twitter is at East and All Red. And uh, it was great to be on here, Wally. Thank you. My my last parting words of advice are: write down your goals, get specific on your goals, and attack them. Excellent. And it has definitely been my pleasure to get you on. And before I let you go, I want to point out to you abundant leaders out there that there is no age limit to who you choose to be your mentor or your coach. I took some inventory on this, quite frankly, and every one of my mentors and coaches that I actively communicate with today, every one of them are younger than me. Some of them 10, even 15 years younger than me. And they are doing the things that I want to do. They are, you know, they have the skills that I want. They're not all living the lifestyle that I want. I'm living the lifestyle that I want right now, but I want more skills. And I need, in order to gain those skills, I need mentors and I need coaches, and they're all younger than me. So what I encourage you to do is find yourself somebody that you resonate with, and without regard to age, gender, or race, or anything like that, it's about the skills that they can bring to you and if they're willing to bring them to you. And if Easton is not that man for you, send your kids over to Fueled.life and have them listen to his podcast, have them get in contact with him and start learning from him. And I think they're going to be much, much better off because let's face it, our teenagers, they, they want to learn. They just don't always want to learn everything from their parents. They learn through, from you through action, through your actions. They get that. But you can't sit and talk to them uh, some of them you can, I get it, you know, I can a little bit with my kids, but for the most part, they won't listen to you, they'll watch you, but they won't listen to you, they need to listen to somebody like Easton, and I think he's the perfect uh, mentor for your kids, so Easton, I, again, I appreciate your time, man, and uh, I look forward to anything else that you have coming out in the future. All right, thank you, you know, it was really great, great to be on the podcast, and I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, well, are you from, what island of Hawaii are you from? I'm on Oahu. Oahu, okay, what, what part of Oahu? My sister lived there for a little bit. Yeah, I'm on the uh, west side of Oahu over on uh, Eva Beach. Okay, that's, that's so cool. My uh, sister lived on the North Shore and said it was the best place on earth, so con- congratulations for living there. M- maybe one day I'll come over there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I want you to take that maybe out of there and say definitely and just go ahead and get on over here, put a date to it. <laughs> all right you know my sister will take me any time so absolutely <laughs> awesome brother well i look forward to uh meeting you someday at you know one of the podcast functions or something like that one one of these days uh pretty soon i have a feeling that we're going to meet face to face yeah thank you so much i you know i'll i'll take you up on that introduce you to uh i'll introduce myself to you because i'm sure i'll see you one of these days <laughs> most definitely all right man take care you as well thank you all right bye All right, men of abundance, as usual, I truly appreciate your time. Thank you very much for listening. If you're getting anything out of this experience, I'm sure other men would too. So be abundant in your life today and make sure you pay it forward. The best way to pay it forward is to share this podcast and share our website and our community with everyone else in your community. Aloha and have an amazing weekend. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.